Good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I am uh, just returning from being incredibly frustrated at the computer. Safe <laughs> to say, me and technology aren't like this, but we're not like this either. Just putting together, together some stuff and some systems for the High Performance Man program that I'm running. Um, I don't need you guys to opt into it, but that's just what I was doing. Uh, and I've been having a really, really, really sound morning. Just walking around my area, really enjoying the fact that I've, you know, I've got a whole facility that's mine, uh, and clients that are really enjoying the service right now. I had a couple of clients not turn up for a couple of weeks, and uh, you know, weren't really connecting. And I just made a note to make sure that they come back to the gym this week. And um, yeah, it was a really fulfilling thing. I'm at that stage now in business where I think when you first start your journey as a personal trainer. You like expect everyone to be on the same bandwagon as you, right? chicken and broccoli or whatever it is for you at that stage. And then you kind of grow up a little bit and you realize like that's not a good fit for everybody. You gotta work with people. Some people don't wanna be you know, Mr. Olympia, Mrs. Olympia, whatever. So you have to work within those constraints and you have to work with people. And if you learn how to work with people, you get the most out of people. Versus if I say, look, this is a, a, a round hole and you're a triangle, I'm trying to just bash you in there right um, if I'm trying to just get you in there it's not ever going to work um, so I guess the things that I've noticed uh, is you know heavy heavy on psychology heavy on uh, human I guess behaviors as well those things have allowed me to be a, a really mindful and aware coach and uh, and also like self-reflecting realizing like hey if these people are dropping off they're paying me to give them a service of accountability, of you know showing up for them every session, being on time, all these sort of having something set up for them. So it's an interesting place where I'm at at the moment in terms of the business and my headspace, and I'm really enjoying it, absolutely loving it. And being able to bring you guys podcasts on a regular basis is uh, something I'm really passionate about. I'm just waiting for a bit more cash to fly in, just so I can get you know, some better microphones. Um, better set up, I guess, really. Set this up. So, um, for you guys, you just get a better all-around experience because that's kind of what I want you guys to do when you come to this page and you come to this podcast. I want you guys to uh, learn as much as you can about men's health, that sort of stuff. So, I suppose um, today I want to talk about basic stuff for guys and, and some time-saving stuff that I've noticed. Now, if you're a bloke and you are a tradie or whatever job you have, and let's say you start work at 5 a.m. For you and your lifestyle, I'm gonna say safely, it's not a good idea for you to wake up at 3.30 and train until 4.30 and then go to work at five. Unless you're someone that's highly motivated, you live by yourself, very like career driven and that sort of stuff, uh, and you're one of those guys that just likes getting it done early, then like myself, like I, I think that's sort of where I sit. If you guys are like that, I'd recommend waking up early and getting it done then. However, if you're someone that likes being up with people, likes that sort of collaborative experience and isn't as much of like a lone wolf, so to speak, uh, I'd recommend doing your sessions in the evening. So how I would do this if you were like a beginner trainer, let's say, I would start with two days a week, whole body sessions, okay? And so that includes some squats, bent over rows, bench press, all that sort of stuff. And you'll just follow a program, a two day program for the next 10 weeks. If you can stick to that, then you can upgrade the program. So if you're someone that really struggles in that regard, I'd recommend getting in two sessions and then walking in and around that. Because if you're walking in and around that, one, it's low fatigue, easy to do, easy to find a place to do it at, and it uh, makes you feel a lot better and helps with the fat burning process as well. So if you're looking to lose weight and you're a guy, those are the simplest things I can think of to get you going. Now, once you pass that 10 week phase, right? So we've got a 10 week phase, I'd suggest another 10 week phase where you do three sessions a week, okay? If that's what your timetable will permit. So for most guys, the excuse is like, hey, um, I work as a tradesman, triggered, I know. Uh, I work as a tradie or like whatever the fuck else job and I finish at X time, late, 6 p.m. And like I don't have the motivation 
to train at night? Well, most guys do a bro split. So they'll do like legs, chest, back, or back, chest, whatever the fuck it is, legs, etc. And you'll feel pretty beaten down from that because you've just obliterated your chest for a whole hour, hour and a half. Plus, you probably don't know what you're doing. So you just go and balls to the wall when you're in there. Or like it's just a mishmash and you're not getting any results. So what I would recommend is just doing whole body and committing to the idea, because you're not going to make any meaningful muscle growth progress in 10 weeks ever unless you're on the gear. So what I would recommend is taking those 10 weeks as a habit building 10 weeks, okay? Then the next 10 weeks, another set of habit building. Because if you go from two sessions a week to three, that's increasing your total load and total expenditure by 33% in terms of your workouts. And that's quite a lot, right? If you look up 30% of your pay, you've gone from, you know, whatever, 80 grand to 120. It's quite a significant jump, whatever it is, 110. So if you think about upping your workload by 30% just because um, without structuring it in, I think it's a really foolish move. So what I would recommend is 10 weeks at two sessions a week, whole body. Then 10 weeks at three sessions a week, whole body. See what your results are at the end of a five-month phase. If you've dropped anywhere from five to 10 kilos, that's a win. If you've doubled, tripled your lifts in anywhere, that's a win. And the best way you can do that is keeping a logbook, okay? And I would recommend doing that from pretty much I'd start two days a week for the first 10 weeks. Second block of 10 weeks, I'd do uh, three sessions, but then I'd stay at three sessions for a year, okay? Because what will happen is if you ramp up too fast and let's say we do four sessions a week for another 10 weeks, so meaning 30 weeks, um, like in total time of training, you might feel like it's a bit too much too soon and you might not be able to attend those sessions. And then so what happens is your psychology will start to erode. You don't want this bad enough. This isn't a good choice for you. You're really not putting in all the effort. And then all of a sudden you'll stop training and you go backwards. So in order to combat that, you need to start ticking your boxes, lads. So ticking the boxes, boys, means like having two sessions a week that you nail and that you also show yourself that you can nail and you build up that self-esteem. Because if you don't build up that self-esteem, you're on a rocky a rocky foundation, okay? You need to show yourself you're that guy that can show up every day, or two days a week, sorry, um, for 10 weeks. And if you don't show yourself you're that guy, then you need to reverse engineer and figure out what's wrong. Why can't I train two days a week? Why don't I want to train two days a week, etc. Uh, and then go from there. Okay, figure out what the fuck's actually going on. Because that's quite... Uh, <clears throat> it's quite a, a tall order, so to speak. Okay. Um, so on the back end of that, the three days, what I would recommend is stick at that for the rest of the year. So you've got 40 more weeks at three days a week. And then once you've measured up the first five months, so the first 20 weeks, do a first measure, second measure at the end of the 20 weeks, then do another measure at the end of the... Th- the 30 week block essentially of or a 30 week block of, of three days a week that you train and then you'll have a really good idea and if you've dropped another five or ten kilos in that time magic if you can lose like five or ten kilos like 10 to 15 kilos in a year reliably just wait for the time to pass and you'll be in the best shape you've ever known it's just more it's just more time consuming but you're going to guarantee your results that way versus if you try and rush it add too much stuff on top of each other you're just going to burn yourself out and you're going to not enjoy the experience at all and then you're going to be back in square one. So with that being said, like I think, guys, that's the best way forward. And, and those three sessions that you're doing, they're going to be whole body as well. So you can do squats, leg press, stiff leg deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts, bent over rows, flat pull downs, side raises for shoulders, bench press, bar or dumbbells doesn't matter and you can do some sort of incline chest press maybe just one two three four five six seven eight and then you can do like some dumbbell curls and then you can do like some tricep push downs right, with the rope and anyone like these ones okay those 10 exercises you could pretty much rotate you know and i'd like for a year because you're only going to be doing the basics. Like, if you want to figure out more exercises, you can. Um, but, like, if I was just starting off and I wanted the fastest results possible, because, remember, if you want to go far, take your time. 
how you got to build foundations. So if you want to go to this level, you can't get there by sprinting it. You've got to get there by slowly sort of stepping up, I suppose. Okay? So those are the things that are going to be really important when it comes to your training. And um, you actually maintaining your weight loss results and your strength gains. Okay? And now, a few people always ask me, and a lot of guys love training core, and I fucking do not understand why. Um, I was able to get a, a really in-shape midsection uh, as a result of just lifting heavy weights all the time. And you can too. It's not just like a magic. Uh, that's what I would recommend you guys doing, just lifting a shitload of heavy weights every, um, every single week, pretty much, and, uh, and not worrying about core stuff. A lot of people would say different. I just don't think um, building these muscles and making your waist thicker is going to be a, a, a way to reduce your your belly fat or reduce anything love handles that sort of stuff okay so those are just the things i see when it comes to training now if you want to go to four times a week five times a week i think four times a week is great if you're at year one to year three of training i've been training for 15 years fuck that's a long time 15 years so i train five days a week I'm looking at stepping up to six because I want to hit my legs a couple times a week because I can't hit them too hard one time. I would hit them two times in a week. Otherwise, my joints get really, really sore. So uh, I'll be looking at hitting them two times a week because I want them to grow, baby. They're in really good nick at the moment, and I really want to take advantage of the fact that I reckon I can get them jacked up. Um, <coughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, that's that in terms of your training and then once you sort of hit that year one to year three mark, then you're sort of free to do whatever you want, I would recommend. I don't think there's any right or wrong, really, once you're in a good rhythm. As long as you're enjoying your training and you're lifting heavy weights, uh, I can't see any reason why you couldn't experiment, play around with different things and, and have some fun with it. Uh, but if I was just starting off in the gym, that's what I'd do. Um, I hope this podcast was somewhat interesting. I haven't really done much on training, uh, but... I thought this one would be a really good one for you lads. If you're looking to get in the gym, get involved. Um, this doesn't cover the diet aspect. I'll cover that on another podcast. But I just thought I'd make a clip for you guys um, that can, you know, uh, I, I guess uh, highlight what I would do if I was you uh, and in my first year of training and weight loss. Cheers.